2007, Live Action Films of California conducted an undercover investigation of Planned Parenthood offices in several states. Under the direction of the organization's president, Lila Rose, the goal of the project was to determine whether Planned Parenthood officials would accept financial donations on the condition that the money would only be used to eliminate African Americans. The following clips are from the actual recordings of those conversations. When I underwrite abortion, does that apply to minorities too? If you specifically want it to underwrite an abortion for a minority person, you can target it that way. You can you can specify that that's how you want it spent. Okay, yeah, because there's, so de there's definitely way too many black people in Ohio, so I'm just trying to do my part. <laughs> okay, whatever. Well, blacks especially need abortions, too. So that's what I'm trying to do. Well, for whatever reason, we'll accept the money. So... So the abortion could could be, you know, I could give money specifically for a, a black baby. That would that be the purpose. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you wanted to designate that you wanted your gift to be used to help an African-American woman in need, mm -hmm. um, then we would certainly uh, make sure that that gift was earmarked specifically for that purpose. Great, because, because I really face trouble with affirmative action, and I don't want my kids being disadvantaged, you know, against... Um, black kids. I just had a baby. I want to put it in his name, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Absolutely. So that's that's definitely yeah. possible. Oh, always, always. So, c c would it be possible for me to, to donate that money specifically for these these minority groups so that they could have access to abortions? Yes, it would be. Wonderful. And could I specify that abortion be done, or uh, those abortions be done for a particular minority group, or how does that work? If you wish, you can. Okay. So, so, for example, the black community in Tulsa, because I have connections with that, would it be possible to, to give the money specifically for that? You sure can. Wonderful. Great. Uh, so, can I give you my credit card number? Yes. Wonderful. Uh, j just one more thing. The, the, abortion, the, the abortions will be done specifically for, for uh, uh, the black community abortions. I can, I will mark it in such a way that definitely it will. Oh, great. On a black baby. Yes. Thank you. Great. The exact amount we charge right now is $450 for an abortion. Okay, $450. Mm -hmm. And um, we can definitely designate it for an African American. Wonderful. Um, yeah. Um, okay, and if I want to make, um, to fund, because, you know, this is, this is a, um, if I wanted to help fund multiple um, abortions, could you also specify that this could be done for um, a specific group? Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm really excited, you know, because I really faced trouble with affirmative action. I don't want my kids to be um, uh, disadvantaged, um, you know, yeah. against against um, against blacks with, in college and and you know, the less um, less blacks out there, the better. So. Yeah, yeah, it's a strange time for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Uh, well, thank you very much, Jeremy. And if you have any questions. Please feel free to give me a call. My extension is 304. When this material was released to the public, Planned Parenthood's defense was to claim that the employees who made these statements were not reflecting the organization's corporate position. But in 1986, Planned Parenthood's national president, Faye Waddleton, made the following statement during an interview on CNN. As a matter of fact, Mr. Dorn, and if I may finish, we have received contributions from people who want us, who want to support us because they want all welfare mothers and all black women to stop having children. What Ms. Waddleton was conceding in this CNN interview and what live action films found in their undercover investigation was acknowledged years before by a previous Planned Parenthood president. During a speech in Philadelphia in January 1966, Planned Parenthood President Alan Guttmacher stated that some of his colleagues appeared to have racial motives for their involvement with the organization. Not surprisingly, one of Guttmacher's acquaintances later warned him that in the future he should not be making comments like that in public. The person who gave that warning obviously understood that Planned Parenthood's racial agendas and attitudes are best kept out of the public. And that has been a philosophy that Planned Parenthood has embraced for many years. This idea that man could reinvent the world through eugenics was an elitist philosophy 
espoused by those who considered themselves to be not only financially superior, but intellectually superior to everyone else. And Planned Parenthood became the golden child of these people because Planned Parenthood is the one who figured out how to make eugenics work. They figured out that the key to racial genocide is not in killing people, but in convincing the target group to commit mass suicide. This is what birth control and especially abortion are all about. And the reason Planned Parenthood has been so successful is because unlike other eugenics organizations, they have always been able to keep their agenda hidden from the public. In fact, sometimes they are even able to hide it from their own people. I will assure you that there are Planned Parenthood employees and volunteers all over this country who have no idea what they're actually involved in. Then there are other people who will look you right in the face and tell you that racism was not the driving force behind the American eugenics movement. And I think you'd have to be a complete idiot to believe that. The truth is that if blacks had never been stolen out of Africa and brought here in chains, there would never have been a eugenics movement in the first place. There would never have been forced sterilizations. There would never have been a birth control revolution. There would never have been a call for the legalization of abortion. And you would have never heard the terms population control and family planning. The fact is that had slavery never existed, Planned Parenthood would not exist today. We need to remember that over 60 years ago, a man who could today be called the father of modern day eugenics proposed that population control clinics be concentrated in minority neighborhoods. And now today, the vast majority of Planned Parenthood clinics are located in our neighborhoods. Are we really so naive to believe that this is all a coincidence? We all know that drugs, alcohol, and tobacco are devastating, especially in the black community. We know that the big corporations target us with the ads and the marketing campaigns. And yet, we don't notice that Planned Parenthood is doing the very same thing? We need to pay attention to the fact that in the 1960s, when we as African Americans began to demand our civil rights, for the first time in American history, there began a widespread cry in our government for legalized abortion. Was that coincidence too? Or could it be that when we said we would no longer sit on the back of the bus, a place was being reserved for us down at the abortion clinic? For most people, it may be hard to conceive that the ethnic cleansing going on today through legal abortion began with the fear of freed slaves. But as you have seen, that is exactly what happened. When colonization failed, Charles Darwin and Francis Galton were there to tell the world that people of African descent were just one small step above the ape. And white elitists embraced that philosophy, not because they had studied it and found it to be true, but because it gave them the permission they needed to wipe us out. And that launched a chain of events that quickly took on a life of its own. Every time one eugenic strategy failed, another was invented to take its place. It was a pattern that would be continued from one generation to the next until they finally discovered the strategy that worked. You know, when you study the Nazi Holocaust, you can see these films of Jews running into ditches to be shot in the head. You can even see films of them actually walking into the gas chambers. And it's tempting to ask yourself why they didn't fight back. I mean, if you're going to be killed anyway, what do you have to lose? Perhaps the answer is that they simply could not believe it was really happening. Maybe the normal human mind is just not wired to accept that your fellow man is capable of such senseless brutality on such a scale, even when you see it happening with your own eyes. As African Americans, we need to recognize that we are doing the same thing. We need to understand that terms like pro-choice and reproductive rights and family planning are nothing more than marketing slogans. They're just code words that organizations like Planned Parenthood use to hide the fact that we're 
voluntarily submitting to the will of those who have been trying to exterminate us since the day slavery ended. At the beginning of this program, we told you that the Ma'afa didn't end with the freeing of the slaves, and that in fact, it hasn't ended yet. Now you've seen the rest of the story. Now you know that legalized abortion is more than just a crime against humanity. It is also the continuation of a 150-year-old racial agenda that was founded in black genocide. And I hope that you have also come to see that as long as abortion remains legal, the Ma'afa cannot end. Thanks for watching. Brothers and sisters, it is time. Yes, it is. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it is time.